culture. Our church is not limited in dreams and imaginations. A church that is creative because we serve a creative God. A church that does not look for inspiration from anyone else but from Jesus. A church that is committed to serving its community. A church full of hope. A church bursting with joy. A church that is alive. A church that has love. A church that loves God and loves people. A church that is committed to serving God. We are all about connecting people to God. We are here. We are here this morning and we are excited to be here this morning and I'm excited to be preaching on the, on the subject, call it out. Call it out. Call it out. The book of John says in the beginning was the word. Before anything ever was, there was the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning, there was a word. All right. Come with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Thank you, Father, that your word is not going to return to you void, but accomplish everything that you sent it forth to do. Lord, help me to preach it the way that you want it to be preached. In Jesus' name, amen. It's about to get good. Go to verse 3. Then God said, turn to your neighbor and say, then God said, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was, God saw the light, and it was, go down to verse 10, and God called the dry land, earth, and the gathering together of the waters, he called seas. And this is the account of creation that we're reading. Eh? God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was. God saw that it was. And God called the dry land. Sorry. Then God, go down to verse 16. No, sorry. Verse 12. Why did I write it twice? Twice. What's verse 12? The land produced vegetations and all sorts of seed-bearing trees. And the Lord saw that it was? Verse 16. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give, the, to give light on the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was? We are about to sing a song. God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves. This is verse 21. With which the waters abounded according to their kind. And every winged bird according to its own kind. And God saw that. Come on. stop! Don't stop singing. And God saw that it was. Verse 25. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its cattle. According to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it, and God saw that it was. You're talking about a God who creates and then he steps back after he creates, and because there's no man to praise, he praises. And because there's no man to bless, he blesses. He steps back. He steps back and he creates something and he says, Yo, this that I've just created, that's the kind of God he is, that, that he created something and then he took a step back and he looks at it and he's like, oh, oh, oh you've just done something so amazing right there. That, this is so good. And then he blesses it. He steps back. He says, Ah, no, this one is blessed. He steps back, and then he says, this one is blessed. And then after he's created it, then he starts making a few things. 
from what he's created. And he steps back and he says, no, this is good. I know that we think reason I had to say John chapter 1 without putting it out there in the beginning was the word I know that we think that the first thing that God created was the heavens and the earth I know that we think that but that's not what the first thing that was created that's not the first thing that God created the first thing that God created was a sound. And when there was a sound, the sound created heaven and earth. The sound created, God made a sound first. Pastor Mike had a movie. And the movie was that he was going to be creating heaven and earth. But before he created, he decided we need to make a sound for it. There needs to be a sound effect for it. That's why the Bible says that when you walk by faith, you speak things that are not as though they were. So in order to have the word, there needs to be a sound that is created for the word. That is not. Without a sound, Lazarus was not coming. Without a sound, Lazarus was not coming. We, we've become so accustomed to not making a sound. And faith begins by making a sound. Without a sound, God is not inhabiting. Tato, you spoke about it beautifully to say he inhabits the praises of his people. Without a sound, there is no inhabiting. Without a sound, there is no falling of walls. Without a sound. <laughs> I explained uh, shares on my birthday that Ruth decided to make me walk in a national park where there is a big five that is not on a diet. <laughs> big five animals, Pastor Mike, you know they are not on a diet. They are cheetahs that you can't outrun. They are lions that you also can't outrun. They are elephants that you can't outrun, that you can't outclimb, that you just, you just can't. And the whole aim of this walk, it's called a game walk. <laughs> the whole aim is that you are looking for the things that you can't outrun. <laughs> and how you find the things <laughs> is through a sound. You know that there is an elephant based on the sound you have not seen it yet but as soon as you hear a sound you know where the danger is all from a sound when the ladies were goofing around from the engine room pretending to be exercising During their conference, I know that they were goofing around because there was, no one was tired. You cannot exercise and then you come back looking fresher. When the ladies were goofing around and pretending to be exercising on their engine, they were watching people exercising. And you can't watch somebody and pretend that you are exercising. I receive the forgiveness. Thank you, Pastor Nina. But, 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 but I know that they were not exercising. 
because we didn't even need to spray the place afterwards. It was still smelling like perfumes. It was still fresh, right? Chris and I were sitting outside. I'm going to another element. Chris and I were sitting outside. Chris and I and Robert were sitting outside doing real work. <laughs> Watching their cars. How you know that it was real work? No car was stolen. <laughs> they felt so safe inside, goofing around. And while we were outside, Pastor Ruth, there was a car that drove past. I don't know if Chris and Robert remember this. And it was making a noise. Like it was making a proper noise. Like a racing noise. But I think all they did was just to remove a certain pipe so that it makes a noise. Because for the level of noise that we, it was making, Pastor Mike, it was going nowhere slowly. <laughs> but the level of noise that it was making, we were thinking, yeah, yeah, well, this one, this one has got power. Because the thing about sound, I saw it yesterday when we were driving back, is that my car roars. And when it begins to roar, it's releasing power. And it moves. And you can't keep up to it because of the sound that it just made, which is releasing power. Great power is accompanied by great sound. You know when a lion is around. Just from burping. Not even roaring. Because the lion's burp is that. <gasps> you know a lion is around. Because with great sound, there is great power that is released. I can tell you the kind of power that exists around you based on the kind of sound that is coming out of you. I can tell you the kind of power that you are getting ready for, the, the manifestation of power that you are getting ready for based on the sounds that you are making. If your sounds are low, A miracle is something that human hands can't perform. I can tell you that you are ready for a miracle based on the kind of sound that is coming out of your mouth. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Meaning he makes a house. Meaning your praises actually make a house for God to inhabit. <laughs> your praise built how a house. Your praise builds God a house. Your praise builds God a house. <laughs> I'm trying to make this statement deep, but I don't think it can get deeper than that. Your praise builds God a house. How big of a house are you building him? So that he inhabits. So that power can enter your place. So that power can enter your house. So that power can enter your room. So that power can enter your life. You see, the kind of power that inhabits your house is determined on the kind of praise and the kind of sound that you are willing to lift up to God. What kind of house are you building God with your praise? Just enter this one room, God. 
I just ask you just for this one room. Or is it the kind of praise that says I'm willing to even strip down to? <laughs> you see the success, business people, the success of David was in his praise. The things that David could not do with his own hands, he did it with his praise. The kind of breakthroughs that came into David's life, business people, was based on his praise. If you're still ashamed of the praise, you are still ashamed of the miracle that is ready to accompany the praise. If you are the kind of person that says, I sit there modestly, oh, Mina, I'm a professional, oh, Mina, I am this, then you are not ready for certain breakthroughs in your life because the kind of praise that you are willing to build for God determines the kind of power that is able to come in. See, Pastor Mike, I've encountered a lot of us who get to a certain place and say we are stuck. And you know what it's going to happen? We're going to remain stuck. Because that is the part where we are supposed to step in and say, oh, now I need to make a sound. Yeah. I need to make a sound that is going to reach heaven so that the power of God comes down. God, God is very intentional. If you've got breath, praise me. If you've got breath, praise me. I don't need your praise, but you need me, and you need to praise me. I don't need, God doesn't need your praise, but you need your praise of God. God doesn't need your praise. He really does not need your praise, he's God by himself. If you were not around, you were still a bad God. I just read it to you. You were still looking at things and blessing things like, oh, this is good. Without your praises. God can do things that are amazing without you. So you are the one who is in need. There's a formula that is missing within our lives. That sets us free and takes us to a place where we can't do things on our own. That's why the Bible is very clear to say, sing thou childless woman. Sing. He's not saying pray about it. He's saying you are childless. Sing. Get up on your feet. Begin to praise. Begin to make a sound. Begin to utter sounds. Begin to sing. I know you don't have it. I know you are incapable of having it. But stand up on your feet and sing. Stand up on your feet and shout. That's why they get out of prison. Because they, when they were down and out, they decided, sing, make, make a sound, sing. It's, it's the singing part. It's the singing part that I found is missing in many of us. It's the sound that is missing in many of us. It's, that's not my thing. <laughs> then miracles are not your thing either. Can I try that slowly again? Singing is not my thing. And then miracles are not your thing. God didn't say, I need you to be on C sharp. God didn't say I need you to be on A. God didn't say I need you to be on D. Uh, God didn't say I need you to be like Tuto. God just said sing. I, 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 right now I'm even preaching to myself because Tuto was like, you should sing some more. And I said, nah, it's not my thing. And so what I'm saying in essence is that some of the things that God has for me, I'm saying it's not my thing. I'm preaching myself happy on this pulpit. <laughs> How many of you have actually stopped in your private space and decided, Ooh, I'm going to turn it up in this place. I don't need more but to hype me. I need the Holy Spirit to enter this one. 
Because if <laughs> in the beginning the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the earth and when there was a sound that was made from heaven, then it got in. Let me correct my, 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 my Bible grammar and say, then he got in. Then the Holy Spirit got involved when there was a sound that was made from heaven. So some of you are needing, are needing to make sounds so that where you can't, the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm coming in. But it's the singing part that sounds so simple. That we believe that I, if we do this, nothing can happen. But it's the singing part, it's the sound part that God is saying, I need you to make a sound that is in relation to what you are trusting me for. You see, once you begin to sing, once you begin to praise God, you are setting your things on, setting your eyes on things that are above. I, I'm going to be teaching about that next week. But, but, but you are setting yourself on things that are above where you are. You are setting your eyes on the level of your expectation. You are setting your mind on the level of your expectation. You are setting your mind on the level of the anointing which is Jesus Christ himself. So you are saying, I, now I'm saying it this way. So I'm going to sing praises because I need you to enter it. When last did you sing a song? But depression has got you singing so much if you didn't catch on. Depression has got you singing so much. Discouragement has got you singing so much that that's all that you are singing. You are singing in your silence and you are expecting something to move. You are expecting something to be released. You, you are just there silently just sitting and you know that you are not singing to the heartbeat of be still and know that I'm God because to be still and know that is God is to say I'm at peace. I'm resting in the power of the Lord. But you are just still because you are saying I am quiet in this one. I am over this thing. You know things are just not working out. I'm here to find out if somebody has been depressed so much or discouraged so much that they've stopped singing. When last did you get into a space when you are sitting in your car where you are saying, I'm blasting this one? Yes. Nobody's watching. But even if they see me, they'll find me worshiping. I don't care. I only care about God. And is it possible? Pastor Lina, that according to his word, you are not giving him anything to inhabit once you are silent. And then you are sitting on the other side and singing is not for me and things are not working out for me either. But God, I do all these things and God is saying, no, I just need you to sing. You know, in this modern day church, I don't believe that when it got to the part where we were shouting that the shouting probably would have happened with the walls of Jericho. Thank you, Pastor Ruth. We wouldn't shout enough because this is so simple. Why would I shout? Shout for what? What is going to happen when I shout? No, you don't understand. I'm an introvert. I'm a very quiet person. And I think we dealt with that like last month already to say you only found out that you're an introvert when they gave you the word God never told, called you that I, 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 I had a fight with Pastor Michael about this introvert thing where I said you are not an introvert who you are is who you are when you are standing on the pulpit remember that, that conversation where I said when you are standing up here you are on fire you are set on fire. That's who you are when you are alone. <laughs> I, 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 I heard a thing, <laughs> Mom Ophelia, where during COVID, it was very hard until God had to challenge me, Lulu. And I think you know it. It was very hard to preach because there were no people in front of me. And then God said, you either have it or you don't have it. Choose now this day. Can you shout about the promises of God when there is nobody who's in the room? 
I was challenged during COVID because I needed to get to a space where, oh, it doesn't matter who's in front of me or who's not in front of me. I'm still declaring with all power because I know that with great power there is great sound with all power in me with all sound in me that God is good that God is credible that God has not forsaken me that God is in the room and if God is in the room and there's nobody else in the room then the room has got enough people in the room can you get to a space where you are sitting by yourself with your family and you say we are going to praise ourselves out of this one when last did you actually get to a space where you say, Lord, we don't have a solution for this one, but we are going to praise ourselves out of this one. Wholeheartedly praise you so that you enter the situation. And when you enter the situation, I don't need laying of hands just like Tosh. I know that when you enter the situation, you can deliver me from the captivity of broke. The Bible says if you seek him wholeheartedly, you will find him. And when you find him, you will not be disappointed. And you will be delivered from your captivity. I don't know what your captivity is. But I do know that there's a sound that needs to come out of your mouth. A worship that needs to come out of your mouth. A praise that needs to come out of your mouth. A shout of expectancy that needs to come out of your mouth. Where you are sitting from on high and you are saying, I'm praising the Lord in this moment. So that the Lord enters this situation. Because I know that when he enters this situation then I shall be delivered from my captivity I know that when he enters this situation that the Bible is very clear to say I will not be disappointed you are disappointed because you are silent church it's time that the church rises up and makes a noise because a great church is accompanied by a great sound a powerful church is accompanied by a great sound the church is... Pastor Ruth yesterday was talking about how the minority, a minority group is putting into effect rules and regulations. I mean, I can't even finish the alphabets. So I just called them the alphabets. L, G, G, just too much alphabets in there. Are dictating to you about how your children that they can produce by the way <laughs> because male and male will not bring me a child female and female will not bring me a child but they are dictating to you how children in your schools ought to be treated because you are a silent church you are a quiet church. So there is no power that is coming from you. There is no roar that is coming from you. So they are roaring like lions when they are not lions. And you are sitting back like Mickey Mouse pets. How does somebody who can produce what you have tell you how you ought to raise what you have? If I get into trouble for the gospel's sake, let me get into trouble for the gospel's sake. But, but, but the reason there is a minority that is determining the route that we take, the route that your children in your schools are taking, is because you are too quiet. All you are going to say, that will never happen. They are publicly loud publicly proclaiming in the space where God told you go into and publicly proclaim the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ they are doing it in that space you are quiet there is no power because there is no sound that's why when we started Connect Christian Church I said oh Lord I see because I, I know that you've shown me I see a church filled with power why? Because it is a loud church. It is not a quiet church. If you belong to Connect Christian Church, you don't belong to a quiet church because the wondrous work of God are not quiet. They are loud. They are bold. So if you are in this church, you ought to be a praising somebody. You ought to be a loud somebody. Forget the introvert and the extrovert. You ought to just be bold and loud about Jesus Christ. Pastor 
might, we can't be quiet. You see, once we are quiet, we are in agreement. Once we are quiet, you are permitting. Once you're quiet, you're permitting certain things. There's no way, Pastor Lina, that Danny is going to come back home and she has a blue eye that we are not going to ask for, ask for an explanation and we are just going to be like, ah, let me make up my story. It's okay. Kids were playing. Probably she was playing and something hit her in the eye. Is that what happens, parents? We are going to be loud about it. So spiritually, why are you being blue-eyed but you are quiet about it? They're beating us left and right. Things are coming against us left and right. And you are like, ah, yeah, it's, it's the way of the world. This is how the world operates. This is how we behave. This is how it is. This is the way of the world. If you're very honest enough, if you're very honest enough, because I'm talking from a place of knowledge that I know what I'm talking about, to say we've gotten into this space where we compromise so much because these are the ways of the world that we accept what is coming against us. God is out here. Can I put this this way? God is out here resting. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Ruth. God is out here resting because we're not calling him to work. Angels are out here chilled. I feel like angels are chilling in, in Thailand. Phuket Island. They're like, ah, we can go anywhere most. They are in Seychelles. They are in Mauritius. Why? Because the, the church is quiet. What is faith? You know, I know, mom, that people are not walking by faith. I'm talking about myself. <laughs> because we praise God when things happen. The Bible says faith is speaking things which are not as though they are. So my level of praise is not waiting for the manifestation if I walk by faith. My level of praise is at the place where they are when they are even not. I'm already praising from that level. I'm already making sounds from that level. I'm already rejoicing from that level. We can't because we are so silent and have been silenced by discouragement. We've been silenced by the world giving us news, by, by the world defining who we are. Then you come here and then you tell me I walk by faith. Not by sight. I walk by faith. Your level of praise ought to be at the level of your expectation. Your level of praise ought to be at the level of your expectation. The sound that comes out of you ought to be at the level of your expectation. Because the sound that God made in the beginning, there was nothing, but it was at his level of expectation. The sound that God made Christ-like people, God-like people, was at the level of his expectation and he was not compromising on that one. Are you rejoicing like you are wealthy? Are you rejoicing like you are wealthy? Let the poor say, it's the sound that you make. Let the weak say, 
It's the sound that you make. Let, let, let the sick say, I am. It's the sound that you make. God is saying it starts with the sound. Your miracle starts with your sound. <laughs> Some of us, it's been a struggle to get it going. Just to put it on gear. Have you ever driven those cars where when you have to put it on gear, hey, push it in. Some of us are at that level where it's been hard to just put it in gear and you don't know that the gear to, to propel your, your miracles to come towards you is just, just put it in and just sing a song. When last did you sing O Childless Woman? When last did you just open up your mouth and just begin to sing? Singing at your level of expectation. So God, in the scripture that I just read you, mom, <clears throat> is out here and is creating and is making things. And he begins to bless all that he has created and he has made. It's important that I make the distinction between created and made. It is very important. In the account of creation, not everything was created. In the account of creation, not everything was created. Some of the things were made. So he created the heavens and the earth. And then he created revelation, light, and darkness. Right? And then out of what he created, he started separating things and making things from things that he created. Are you with me? We're together on that one. Create means to bring something into existence. To make is means to take something and make it into something. It's to take something and make it into something. So to create is to take from nothing and just create, make something, bringing it into existence. But to make is to take from something that has already been created. So he created the heavens and the earth and then from the earth he started making things. Started releasing things. Start just releasing things. And as he was releasing things, you know how he was releasing things, Pastor Lina, he was making a sound to the things that were holding the things that he needed to make. So when he made a sound towards the ocean, he said, ocean, you are holding sea creatures within you. He never spoke to the sea creatures that were not there. He never spoke to the beast of the land that were not there. He spoke to the thing that was holding the thing back. He said, see, you are holding something in you. There's something that is inside you that you are holding back. And the sound that he made propelled the sea to release that which was inside it. And then you had sea creatures. He spoke to the atmosphere and the air and he said, there are things within you that I need created that, that you are holding back. Some of you this morning need to rise up and have an understanding that you don't need to be praying about the things over and over, but you need to get to a space where you say, there is somebody that is holding this thing back, so you need to release that which is meant for me. I'm about to mess you up. I've been saying to you there's a reason for your tribulations. When God in encountered darkness, void, and nothingness, he saw it as an opportunity to speak to it. God never spoke to any other source but the problem. The Bible declares that there is treasure hidden in dark places. Some of the dark places that you find yourself in, you need to speak to it. Because there is something in it. 
that needs to be released that is for your good so when God encountered a void and a darkness and nothingness he said there is something that is hidden in you that needs to be released so some of your tribulations some of your trials you need to get to them and say there is something that is a blessing for me instead of crying about the darkness All of his promises are yes. How many of you guys have been praying according to the promises of God? All of them have been answered. But it's, it's possible that it's not been answered the way that you think it ought to be answered. He's brought it to you on a silver tray. And he says to you, speak to the tray to release it. No, I've answered you. I've answered your request. Yes. I've answered you. Oh, I brought you the earth. When he spoke, the one that I didn't type down, type out, he said, he spoke to the earth and he spoke to the land and said, produce vegetation. Having an understanding that the land has some of the trials and the nothingness that you find yourself in and you need a solution for them, you need to speak to them knowing that they have. You've been sitting with the problem that is an answer from the Lord. I'm about to mess you up further. Remember that the devil is after the word. Is it possible that when the devil is around you that the word has arrived by you? Ooh. Let me try it this side. Is it possible that Pastor Mike that the word, the devil is after the word of God? Is it possible that when he comes around you that the word of God has come to you and it's sitting by you and you do not talk to the word to say that you need to be manifested. You don't talk to it and say release this and, and release it because this one is mine. Is it possible that the promises have arrived in your room but because they're coming attached with certain things you are thinking that God has not answered but I'm here to tell you that the devil's after the word. He's not after you. So the things have arrived but the word that God has spoken over your life the devil is holding on to. Pastor Ruth, let me explain it proper. Come. Mopa, come. Stand on the other side, guys. Stand behind her. Go to the corner if you can. Matlodi, come. Stand here. So what is going to face Pastor Ruth? What is going to happen? Face Pastor Ruth. What is going to happen is this. I'm going to be illustrating to you who you are. The representation of God. Ruth is the representation of the promise. <laughs> Ruth is the representation of the promise. Mutlodi because she doesn't want to remove these dots that I've been asking her to remove. It's a representation of demons that are holding your things back. <laughs> the trials and the tribulations. Right? St take a step back, Mutludi. Because you can't be in the same presence where the Lord is. Father, I thank you that, Lord, I need you to just release your promises over this one. And the Bible says that his promises are yes. And amen. So God releases the promise. And the promise is coming towards me. But because Satan is not after you and is after the word, the word has been spoken. There's the promise. The devil begins to latch on to the promise. Though it tarries, wait on it. The promise shall surely come to pass. So it is coming closer. But the devil is holding on to it. 
It is coming closer, but the devil is holding on to it. It's coming closer, but the devil is holding on to it. And then when it enters your space, what you see is this. Because this is what's facing you. What you don't see is that this is latching on to what you've been praying for and praying about. So you are out here looking at this and you are feeling discouraged. You are out here looking at all these bills and you are feeling discouraged. Not knowing that you now need to address this because spiritual warfare, stay there, is something that we have not taught you. Spiritual warfare where we say, release this thing because the only reason he's in your space is because he's holding on to something that belongs to you. It's not you he's after. It's that thing that was be, which has been released into your life that is holding on to. So Pastor Mike, some of the things that we've been crying about my brother, it's possible that this is an indicator because this one is an idiot. This is an indicator. I'm not talking about this child. I'm talking about this one in the example because they are still in the play. <laughs> It's possible that this idiot does not show you, does not know that, he, know that he has shown you that this promise from the Lord, this word from the Lord has arrived. So now it's come. And the Bible says there's treasure hidden in dark places. Darkness has come because earth comes out of the same darkness. There was darkness, there was the void, there was, but the things came out of that very same thing. So here is this thing. All you are seeing, oh, you, you see today you are spiritually led. You, you, all you are seeing is just this black. You knew today that you were going to act, my child. All you are seeing is this black, not knowing that what is hidden behind this. this the devil's not even looking at you. He's latch holding, holding on to your promises. But you are out here, sitting here and crying. That no, no, life is not fair. I've been praying about this thing. The thing is like, I'm here. Thank you. You guys were so brilliant. Can you give it up for them? So the next time you check out the trial, it's possible. Lulu, it's possible because it says count it. Count it. All oh, joy. Count it. All oh, joy. Oh, this church is quiet today. Let's go to something else so that I can prove my point. Genesis chapter 1 verses 6 to 7. You remember every single time he, he created something, he blessed it. He said, and, and so it was? Good. And so we even started singing a song, which some of you, it's not your thing, you so you didn't sing. But it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. It's not me, it's not me. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And God saw that it was? And God saw that it was? And God saw that it was? God saw that it was? <clears throat> try read try read so God made the heavens made the hair vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it and God saw that it was why is that one not good everything received a good everything received a blessing why did this one not receive a blessing? Because everything, it was finished. That was the day. He did his thing. That was his second day. He did his thing, did his thing, and then it was so. But every other day, it was good. He got to Michael Nguenya. He said, very good. And Lulu said, I was trying to get you an amen. She's quiet there. 
Let's, let's teach you. And he made Louisa and he saw that she was very good. Thank you. But this part is, is a part where God doesn't say it was very good or it was good. He just says it was so. He separates the waters. Some of the versions say, versions say he separated the heavens. And he said it was so. Let me read you another scripture quickly. Ooh, it's going to get good. Matthew 25 verse 41. Follow with me on the, on the chorus board. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Prepared for? And his angels. Mama Ophelia, what this is now telling me is that the devil and his angels, the devil and his demons, are not in hell. It is prepared Hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. So they are not there yet. So if they are not there yet, where are they? <laughs> and the Pastor Mike is saying, go back to hell. Even the devil said, mm? <laughs> not yet, Baba. <laughs> for as long as you don't know your scriptures, I'm roaming here. I'm going to Ibile, you know what? Let's watch Gomorrah together. Gomorrah! <laughs> if it is a place that is prepared for them, it is talking about, <laughs> another translation says reserved for them. Another translation says reserved for them. Th this is how I've explained it before. And I'll explain it the same again. If you go to a restaurant, and you get to a restaurant and the table is written reserved. Do you sit on the table? Why? It's reserved for someone. Someone is coming there. You may not see them yet, but they are coming. This one is a reserved table for the devil and his angels. Hell is a reserved table for the devil and his angels. So you can, you can, all you want is not time to go to dinner for them yet. You can go to hell all you want. Oh. You know, when we teach a gospel that is now messing people's eyes, you see people's eyes are like, yeah, what? Whoa. Cool. Come with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And I encourage you so that they don't say Leanne that we manipulated them with the scripture. Please go and read it in your own Bible so that you see that it's the same. But 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 2 for the sake of time, follow with me there. This is Paul speaking. He says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. So here is logic. Logic dictates. If there's a third heaven, there must be. And there must be. If you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, which I encourage you to read, which talks about the armor of God. It goes on in there and it talks about the fact that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but spiritual forces in heavenly places. There goes the answer of where the devil and his angels are. In heavenly places. Third heaven is the place where God is. But he's also omnipresent. That's so cool about him. And he's also outside the heavens. How cool is God that he's in heaven but outside of heaven as well? Like, like God is just a rock star. Like I need you to know that God can step into anything at any point and mess it up. If I'm outside something and I'm controlling that something, it means I'm bigger than that something and I can step into it at any point at any time. I can, my one step into the universe can shake things up. 
That's why Pastor Ruth, the, 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 the mountains were melting like wax because when he steps in, he can do whatever. He can literally just blow hot air into a mountain and that's it. He can just make a sound into a mountain and that's it. When he steps into it, that's why a sound from God creates all of us. That's how big your God is that you probably sometimes undermine and under, under look or under value. That he just makes a sound. Heaven and earth is created. He makes a sound. There's a lion, there's whatever. Just from a sound. That's how big he is. Third heaven is where he is. Where he's releasing the promises. First heaven is the earth. That's why they call it the other side of heaven. It's the earth. That's where you are. The warfare is happening in spiritual places. In heavenly places. That's the second heaven. That's where you are speaking things that are not as though they were. That's the place where you guys are operating from where you come to church on a Sunday morning when people don't know the sense of it. Why do you come to church? Is there something that you saw? Is church a real thing to you? Is something that you know about your God? Well, this is, I'm just trying it out. <laughs> How many tryouts? <laughs> but there's something that you know about your God that you haven't seen. And that you don't see it does not know it's real. Because you have an understanding that all of this was created from something that was unseen. All of this that is seen was made out of things that are unseen. That's why you land up in church. Come with me to the book of Daniel chapter 10. Because I'm going to explain something that is going to blow your mind, Mamophilia. A hand touched me and said to me, this is when Paul was doing that one. Eh? And I've said it before. It's going to take Jesus Christ himself coming into the church to tell me that we are going to fast for 21 days. Because me and vegetables, we are not together, Mama Phil. Between Cain and Abel, I always explain these things. Because I'm a very spiritual somebody. God accepted the meat. He didn't accept the vegetation with the offerings. So, <laughs> which offering did he accept? The veggie or the meat? Oh, God is cool like that. I don't know what Daniel was thinking here. So Daniel is saying, I'm <laughs> Daniel says, we are going for 21 days and I'm going to be fasting for 21 days and I'm going to be eating vegetables ugh, for 21 days and fruits, yay for 21 days right and then the Bible declares he prayed, Pastor Mike on the first day of the 21 days and the Bible declares on that first day God answered Day one, he answered. But there was no manifestation of the answer. It came 21 days later. The manifestation. Ne? Now let's pick it up at verse 10. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, I could stop there and preach forever. Because in your discouragement when you pray about something, you have no understanding that the God that the God that you serve feels like this about you. Can I ask you maybe to encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, call them by name if you know their name. If you don't know their name, ask them their name. Say, neighbor, you are highly esteemed by God. Some of you think because you are going through certain things that God does not esteem you. God does not care about you. God does not love you. You are highly esteemed. This is what he's saying. You are highly, you who are highly esteemed, consider the words I'm about to speak to you. So I'm about to speak to some words, speak some words to you, whether you are online, whether you are here. Consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for now I have been sent to you. 
And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Ruth. Do not be afraid, Ophelia. Do not be afraid, Geraldine. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. But the prince, say but the prince, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. I'm trying to prove a point here. And the point is that God has heard your prayers from heaven and he has answered your prayers from heaven, but your prayers are held up somewhere. And from what I read in the book of Genesis, I have an understanding that God prayed and spoke to the thing that was holding the thing that he needed manifested. And it is now possible that you ought to be praying to the thing that is holding that which you've been praying about. And for as long as you are not speaking to the thing that is holding your promises, your promises are remaining in prison. me. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. It's one of our favorite scriptures in this church. It says for all for all nothing is left out. All of them all of all God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. Let me stop for a second. It has been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding Yes, 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 yes. God is out here saying, I, I said yes on day one to uh, Daniel. I said yes on day two, Daniel. I said yes on day three. Go to day, day 10, I'm still saying yes. That's why it's called a resounding yes. It, another version says a reverberated yes. It is a yes, 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 yes. Yet you out here thinking God is saying no to you because that manifestation has not come. But God is saying yes, yes. Yes, what Christ wants you to hear is yes, 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 yes. And through, through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. God has said, Yes. He said, yes. I need you to be convinced when you leave this place that God has said yes to his promises coming to pass over your life. But as the angel is explaining, he says, on day one, Daniel, the Lord said yes. Because I'm going to teach you about cancellation now. Of promises. <laughs> the Lord said yes. And I brought the promise. And as I was bringing the promise. Ophelia felt discouraged. And when Ophelia felt discouraged. She prayed contrary. To the promise that I was bringing. And because angels are subject to Ophelia. The promise never came to pass. Because Ophelia began to speak a different language and speak a different story to the one that she prayed about on day one. Cancelled out because of discouragement. Cancelled out because of fear. Cancelled out because you thought that God can't do it. Bible 
Bible is very clear in Hebrews 10, 23. It says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. For he is faithful that promised. In 2 Corinthians, he says, for all God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. In Hebrews 10, he says, hold fast to the profession of your faith. For he is faithful that promised. So the one that promised is telling you it's coming to pass. The one that's telling that promised is telling you it's coming to pass. But he needs you to do something as well. Hold on. Hold on to the profession. Another translation in the King James Version says, not our, the word our is put in italics telling you that it's just been put in. So the scripture should actually say, hold on to the profession of faith. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to faith. Hold on to faith. For he that promised. Hold on to the fact that you are speaking things that are not as though they were. For he that promised the things. It's faithful. Hold on to faith. What is faith? According to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See here, ne? this scripture is explaining the description and the behavior of faith. That it is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Could I, could I teach you Greek? Substance of things hoped for. Substance is the Greek word hypostasis. Hypostasis. Which is a compound word. The first part of the word is hupo, which means alongside. Hupo, which means alongside. The second part of the word is stasis, which means to stand. When you put the word together, it means to stand alongside. Stand alongside. Taken as one word, it means to stand by something. To stand right alongside of something. What this tells us, Pastor Ruth, is that when faith finds something to hope by, it remains immovable and stands alongside it. To say it might be poverty right now, but I'm speaking of things that are not as though they are. And I'm standing by the fact that I am rich. I'm not ready for this. It might look like poverty right now, but I'm standing by something that says I am You are standing by it to say that you are rich. I need you to have an inner conviction that says I'm standing by this. I am rich. When I'm poor, I am rich. Let the blind say I am rich. I was just testing you. Let the blind say I can. Let the poor say that I am. Rich. Let the weak say I am And stand by it. Because faith has, has found something in this, in, this, in this world that does not believe in you. Faith has found something to believe in. Oh, Luis Anguenya is the best version of what this world needs. Pastor Mike, it's a no nonsense faith. It takes the bull by the horn. Mom called. It takes it by the horn. It sticks to its guns. <laughs> it's 
firm. It's unhesitating. It's tireless. Inflexible faith. That faith knows exactly what it wants. It's a faith that does not bend under pressure. It's in Zimbabwe and Apugio under pressure. That means it's a steel that does not break under pressure. You can't break it. It's not cheap. It's not flimsy. It's not made in. It's not made in. It's an original faith that says, I stand by this. You see, part of it is that we don't get it because we don't stand by it. And how I explain this faith is that I explain it via and I've got two minutes to explain it. I explain it via a pit bull. When a pit bull when you play with a pit bull <laughs> okay you see, you guys I know you have not played with dogs. You see when you play with a pit bull there's a bicycle tire. You don't play with a pit bull. Pit bull. Nah, nah. Hello, doggy. Eh, eh. You play with the tire. You take the tire and you go like this to the pit bull's mouth. And it grabs the tire. And then it becomes a tug of war. You'll be trying to pull the tire away from the pit bull. The pit bull refuses. And it will be there fighting you. In fact, Chris told me the other day that it has been proven that once it gets a hold of the tire that it has been designed in such a way that its teeth, teeth begin to lock so no matter what you do it can't open its mouth it has locked in I need you to have the kind of faith that is like a pit bull locking onto a tire to say you can't get me off this tire try whatever you will try do whatever you will do you can't get me off it so what has to happen is that you need to release this tire that you are it's a tug of war you want the word but i'm out here trying to pull the tire the devil is out here saying i'm trying to pull the tire you need to get to a place where you're saying i am holding on no matter what i am holding on because somebody needs to get tired and release this tire evidence of things not seen you see, all the things that are unseen are God's responsibility. They are not your responsibility. What the Bible is saying here is that somebody needs to give evidence. Evidence is where, where do we give evidence? In a court of law. Right? In a court of law. This is one of my favorite parts. In a court of law, you get to a court of law and you take a stand, Sis Liz. And when you take a stand, they give you a Bible. And they say, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Then what do you say? I do. Now the person who's taking the stand is the one that we are swearing by. It's God himself. Because I said the things that are unseen are not your responsibility. They are God's responsibility. So God is taking a stand. And they are asking God, do you swear to tell the truth? Nothing but the truth. So help yourself. He takes the stand. He says, I swear by myself that in blessing you it's a quiet church in blessing you I shall surely blessing you bless you in healing you you are healed in providing for you you are provided for in victory you are already victorious in weakness you are already strong. In releasing the promises that I have over your life, I have already released them. So it's possible that like God, Lulu, you need to speak to something. 
Who's holding it? I'm going to ask you to rise up on your feet for the next minute. If you're watching at home, rise up to your feet as well. I'm going to ask you to call out some things. Our culture, our church is not limited in dreams and imaginations. A church that is creative because we serve a creative God. A church that does not look for inspiration from anyone else but from Jesus. A church that is committed to serving his community. A church full of hope. A church bursting with joy. A church that is alive. A church that has love. A church that loves God and loves people. A church that is committed to serving God. We are all about connecting people to God.